Hey, we're back on Get Down to Business, the show all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. I am super excited, thrilled, actually, to be joined by Dr. Roger Fierstein, um, who is the author of a fantastic book. It's called Solve the Real Problem, because what you think is the problem uh, is usually not the problem. And uh, Roger, really, really excited to have you on the uh, on the show where we're going to learn how to stop solving the wrong problems. How about that? That sounds great. And it's great to be on the show. Thank you, Shalom. Absolutely. So let's get to know you a little bit, yes. uh, the person behind the microphone, before we start to solve the real problem over here. Roger, why did you get interested in this topic? And tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been involved in the creativity and innovation business for about 45 years now. Um, I've had the privilege of working with uh, hundreds of companies across the world. And the latest book, Solve the Real Problem, came as a result of working with uh, really smart, sophisticated people like doctors and like people in the military. And they were familiar with my work in creative problem solving and creativity uh, from my book, Create in a Flash, that we talked about a couple of years ago. And they said, we'd like you to come in and we'd like you to, uh, to help us to figure out how, how to help us to figure out what the real problem is. I said, wait just a second. I mean, you folks are, are, are doctors and, and you folks are in the, in the military. You can't figure out what the real problem is. And they said, well, no. Oftentimes, if we're, in a, if we're in the military, we're in a command and control environment. It's sort of like, well, the problem is what the admiral thinks is the problem or, or the boss thinks is the problem. Oftentimes in medical situations, it's the problem that uh, sort of your first leap to what the problem was. And so one of the things I was discovering is that really smart people are good at coming up with ideas. But when it comes up to questioning what the real problem is, that's where we have a bit of a challenge there. And so my philosophy is about 90% of the time what we think is a problem is actually not the problem. It's a symptom of the problem or what the boss thinks is the problem or a knee-jerk reaction to the problem. And this book set out to give you some specific tools to actually find what the real problem is. And, and things like that, uh, mistakes like that, cost time, energy, and frankly, lives, because you've already Absolutely. alluded to a couple of those industries. But again, uh, misdiagnosis of illnesses, education programs that don't help students, millions of dollars into business plans that don't get off the ground. These are some really, uh, some, some really real examples over here. So, Roger, let's talk about what's in this book. And I almost mm-hmm. hesitate at calling it a book because there's a lot of research in there and a lot of real examples. So... Uh, I've alluded to some of those examples. What are some of those problem-solving mindsets that you can share with our listeners? Just the Reader's Digest version. Sure, absolutely. Well, in this book, I interviewed people from medicine, engineering, manufacturing, transportation, all walks of life. And I asked them, I said, give me an example of a problem that you worked on that when you got down the road a bit, it really wasn't the problem at all. It was something else. And so I got all these wonderful responses from all of these terrific people from all these various industries. And I found that what happened was their responses settled into four categories or mindsets, as we call them. One, and this, this is the mindset that we use to solve the problem. So one mindset that will help you solve the problem is to challenge your assumptions. Challenge your assumptions. The other one is to get an outside perspective. The other one is to see the big picture. And the other one is to look for all the details. And in each one of those mindsets, we have examples of, of exactly the case where people set out to solve one problem, wasn't the problem at all, and we discovered it was another problem that really needed to be worked on. So, yeah, so they're challenging assumptions, get an outside perspective, see the big picture, look for all the details. Absolutely. So those techniques have uh, already been uh, helping so many folks. Again, I'm chatting with Dr. Roger Fierstein. A- indeed, we had you on talking about creating in a flash. I mean, you've, you've lived on the in the creative process, and certainly you've done that um, in uh, and shared some of those techniques uh, in many schools that you have uh, taught in and appreciate you coming on the program. Um, I know you've shared expert views on creativity in many publications, but what are some of the individuals and organizations that you've been able to, to help through this process? Any any real examples that you can share with us? Uh, well, I can share a, a whole, whole bunch of examples I can, I can share with you. Um, I've done work with General Motors when we worked with those folks, uh, and we worked with the Clorox company, and we were fortunate we uh, went to work on a problem there with those folks that was troubling the company for 70 years. We were able to come up with a new way of solving that in about 15 minutes. Um, you, you name the industry, we've just about been there. <laughs> Absolutely. And again, things like that uh, save 
a, uh, a fortune of money. Mm-hmm. And, and again, really, uh, one of the things we've talked a lot about on the program in other conversations is people want to be used the right way. Nobody wants to right. push paper around yeah. just for the sake of pushing the paper. And uh, you mentioned some of those examples of bureaucracy within the government that mm-hmm. you know the government can certainly uh, use some of your creative problem solving. Um, CPS, I know you use that term, uh, right. that, that acronym quite a bit uh, yeah. for short. Um, so that, that's great. Some real uh, successes. You talk about clarifying the problem mm-hmm. uh, quite quite a bit. Um, do you mind sharing the again the highlights of some of those steps yeah. of clarifying the problem? Yeah. So the bottom line is is we've been taught to find answers to problems, not to question the problem itself. And so we've been taught to find answers to problems, not to question the problem itself. And so when we talk about clarifying the problem, we don't accept the first definition of the problem as a real problem. So let's play around with that for just a little bit. We use language to clarify problems. For example, there's a big difference between saying we don't have enough money and it's too expensive as opposed to saying how to raise the money or how might we reduce the cost. Now, that's, those last two questions are what we call creative questions. And they begin with words like how to or how might. Right? Those creative questions actually tell your brain to go and begin looking for solutions for solving that problem as opposed to those first two statements that say, there's no ideas out there, why bother looking anyway? And so what we have folks do is very simply just come up with a whole bunch of creative questions. And you know, I think people are very familiar with brainstorming and coming up with lots and lots of ideas. But what we do in this book is we use the same technique to come up with lots of ideas, to come up with a whole bunch of different ways to view the problem. Because it's our view that the problem that you see is the problem that you solve. That's and what way this to, book is all about. It's exactly. not the real problem because what you think is the problem is usually not the problem. We're mm-hmm. going to continue our conversation with Dr. Roger Parson when we return. I'm Get Down to Business in just a moment. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Continuing our conversation with the one and only author of Solve the Real Problem. Really enjoying this conversation. It's really something that's relevant to big businesses, small businesses, um, uh, entrepreneurs certainly tuning into this program, uh, uh, regardless of industry, chatting with Dr. Roger Fireson. Roger, welcome back. Thanks so Thank much you. for joining us. Absolutely. So we've been chatting about a couple of uh, the problem-solving mindsets. And something that's interesting uh, that you mentioned is getting an outside perspective. That's something we always mention on this program, getting that mentorship what do you mean by outside perspective? Well, getting an outside perspective, the best source of new information is not from the people that you talk to every day. They have the same information that you do. And so when we're working on a challenge, we recommend to like go outside of the area. And let me give you an example. Uh, the container shipping industry. Do you know who invented, not necessarily who invented, but what business do you think the person that invented the container shipping industry was in? Oh, yeah, that's I'll the, give you I, a hint. No, please. It, it wasn't shipping. Okay? <laughs> the inventor of the container shipping industry was a truck driver. And the, the problem with the, uh, the, the ships in the 50s is that the shipping industry was dying because they spent more time in ports uh, loading and unloading freight. So a truck driver named Malcolm McLean looked at it and he said, well, what if we put standardized boxes, put the freight in there, and have it preloaded before the ships even come in? That cuts down the time at the, at the docks. They can turn around very, very quickly. But it wasn't the people in the industry that came up with the idea of container ships. It was a person in a related industry, but certainly not in the shipping industry. So that's an example of getting an outside perspective. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. And um, challenging your assumptions, that's yeah. something I know also uh, really, really important. Tell me, tell me more. Well, here's a medical example. So um, in the book, we talk about a physician who uh, is a sports physician, and he, and he fixes people that have – have problems with spines and those sorts of things. A um, young gentleman comes into him, and uh, he says his tailbone hurts. Well, first is, this young gentleman is, is admitted to, uh, goes to the hospital. Uh, he's 12 years old. His, he said his tailbone hurts, his tailbone hurts. Well, he goes into the hospital. Uh, they do x-rays on him. The orthopedist comes in. He goes, I'm looking at your x-rays. I don't see any problem with your tailbone here, but I'm going to give you another test. So they gave him an MRI, all right? Still no problem with your tailbone, Okay. So he gives them another x-ray. Now, this child has got like the equivalent of like 300 x-rays, all right, which is really challenging. You know, it's going to be a health problem later on. Still nothing. So he goes to uh, Dr. Michael Geraci, who's a specialist in this. The young man comes in, and Mike Geraci says, well, I'd like you to do this. Uh, Point to where it hurts. And so the 12-year-old young man points to a place on his back about four inches above his tailbone. He didn't know what a tailbone was. 
So the earlier doctors assumed that a 12-year-old knew exactly what his tailbone was. It wasn't that at all. It was just a herniated disc, and he gave him some exercises. So there was an example where they just went with one assumption and created some real challenges there. So just what does it hurt? Well, it was three inches above where your tailbone is. <laughs> that's, that's, that's wild. Roger, I could talk to you for hours, and uh, it's really, really a fascinating discussion. But the most important homework assignment that I want to give our listeners is to get a copy of this book and get in touch with you. There's so many more examples, so many other deep dives that can be done. And I know we've already talked about some of your previous books, but I'm sure you've got a lot more research and a lot more information in store. Roger, how can we get in touch with you? And again, what's the name of the book? The name of the book is Solve the Real Problem, because what you think is the problem is you usually... Or you can go to my website, uh, Roger Firestein. And that's a wrap for us here. What a great week. Some fantastic guests, lots of content information. Uh, and I've certainly learned a lot. I hope you did as well. Go to my website, sycline.com. Subscribe, rate, review, and share on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a single episode. Get to my website, sycline.com. It's a success. Let's get down to business. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next week right here on 8560.